Hello everyone. In this series, Preparing for Rapture, each week we have been discussing a particular letter written to one of the seven churches uh, mentioned in the first three chapters of Revelation, preparing them so that they will be ready for what is to come, in, what is revealed in Revelations chapter 40 through to the end of the book, chapter 22. We want not to be ashamed at his coming. And this is why Jesus dictated these letters to John to then give to each of these churches. Now, I just want to go ahead and say now before I forget, although this is letter number seven today, the last of the seven churches, our series doesn't end today. Come back next week because we're going to have a quick review of the seven very important things, something about Jesus himself also in these seven churches. Uh, we're going to have a quick review of that. And then also, because we're preparing for rapture, let's just quickly remind ourselves next week why so many Christians today believe that the sound of that trumpet signaling the rapture is imminent. It could be at any moment. What is that? What are the signs? None for the rapture, plenty for the tribulation, and the rapture comes just prior. So we'll look over that next week, and then our series will conclude at that time. So today, our last church is the church in Laodicea. And uh, as we've been doing, let's just have a little background of what uh, what is happening in that city. First of all, it's built along a river, the River Lycus, and therefore, uh, no surprise, it's a trade route. There are boats on the river, but they are also uh, camel caravans, uh, a mode of travel back then. They didn't have trains. They had um, camel trains, I guess, camel caravans, and they would load up uh, with their goods, people coming into the city to sell and then taking things out. It was known to be a rich city, probably because of being on such a major trade route. There were banks, there were the arts, uh, there were all sorts of businesses, um, and recreations, there were monuments, beautiful parks. It was known to be quite a magnificent city. They, um, as in all the cities, sadly, they had their main um, false god and they particularly worshiped Zeus. And um, also they were known for two things that they manufactured. One was black wool. Uh, people would come far and wide to get the black wool. And in the city also, there were um, factories, I suppose we would call it, and they would make rugs, carpets, garments out of the black wool and sell them. So they were known for that. They were very rich because of that also. And then there was a very well-known medical school uh, in this town of Laodicea, and they were particularly known for making an eye ointment. So people from far away, if they could get there by any means, they would come and, uh, and receive treatment of this eye ointment that would help to clear the infections and, and then hopefully restore a better sight to them. So we'll mention that again as we go along, but just a background there as to the city and the people of Laodicea. Now Jesus is dictating to John and he says this, beginning uh, with verse 14 of chapter three of Revelation. He says, write this letter to the angel, the pastor of the church in Laodicea. He said, this is the message from the one who is the amen. And we say that uh, after we pray, don't we? We give our prayer, we say amen. Sometimes you're sitting in church and the, the pastor or the speaker is giving a message and someone in the congregation may shout out amen. Uh, it, it means um, we agree with or I consent to this. And Jesus is saying, this is from the one who is the amen. I, mean, I am agreeing with this. I am consenting to this, what I am saying. And then he says, I am the faithful witness. I am the true witness. Amen. He says, the beginning of God's new creation. That reminded me of uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. It says, when any man is in Christ, when anyone comes to Christ, what happens? Old things are what? Passed away and all things are become new. You and I, when we receive Jesus into our lives, indeed, all those old things forgiven, passed away, we are covered by the blood of Jesus. We are washed new. We become a new creation in Christ Jesus. And he's reminding us of that here, verse 15. And he says, I know all the things you do that you are neither hot or cold. Hmm. And he says, I wish that you were one or the other. Okay. Let's read the next verse. But since you are like lukewarm water, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. This is rather severe, isn't it? And this is probably, my opinion, you might agree, probably the most severe letter that Jesus has written. Uh, but when we read that, that sounds kind of almost 
insulting, doesn't it, to say to somebody, well, I, I wish you were this or that, and if you're not, I'm just going to spit you right out of my mouth. Sounds a bit, uh, bit severe, a bit insulting, but they would have known exactly what he was talking about, particularly because of the medical school that was there. You see, in this time, if a person came to the hospital, to the medical clinic, and they were unwell, um, the doctor might feel it's best if we get them to throw up. And they used a mixture of a lukewarm water to make their patient to throw up. Uh, in this part of the world, it was very common to have a very hot steaming tea or a very cold drink. But to have lukewarm, especially in Laodicea, where the medical college was known for using lukewarm water to make people vomit, uh, they, they would have known exactly what Jesus was talking about here. He says, you're, you're lukewarm, warm. you're sick. You're not hot, you're not cold, you're sick, you're lukewarm. And he says then, I will spit you out of my mouth. You make me want to vomit. You're sick and I'm going to vomit because of you. This is what Jesus is saying. And I want to point out something here too. He says, I will spit you out of my mouth. This is using our Greek tools, our, our Greek um, dictionary, part of our spiritual deep sea diving tools. Um, this is the Greek word melo. And melo means I might or I am about to or it is absolutely closely possible. That is what this is saying. It's not final. He's not saying this is how you are. You're lukewarm. You're sick. You're spiritually ill. And therefore, I'm spitting you out of my mouth. I'm vomiting because of you. He says, I am about to do this. So it's a heed. Take warning. All right. Verse 17. You say, I'm rich. Remember, they're known for being a very rich city. Says, you say, I'm rich. I have everything I want. I don't need anything. Everything I could possibly want is here in my physical world. And you don't realize, Jesus says, that you're wretched and you're miserable and you're poor and you're blind and you're naked. You don't even realize that. You have all these physical things. You can clothe yourself and adorn yourself, oh, beautifully, exquisitely. You can eat the finest foods. Oh, but, but you think you're happy. In the physical world, and Jesus is saying, I want you to look deep into your heart, into your spiritual world, and there you will find when you measure yourself against what I say in my word, against the glory of Jesus Christ, you will find by the way you are living, by what you make your priority, that in fact, you, you are wretched and miserable. You don't even realize it. Jesus says, I want you to look. I want you to look into your heart. You'll see you're wretched, you're miserable, you're poor. You're blind, you're spiritually dull, blind, you can't, you can't hear or see. You're naked, you're not clothed in that, uh, in that white garment that only repentance uh, washed in the blood of Jesus. He goes on to say something there. He says, I advise you to buy gold from me, gold that has been purified by fire. Do you know what that reminded me of? Let me read this to you. Might have reminded you of it in two. This is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. It's talking in verse 11, referring to Jesus being our foundation. And then beginning in verse 12, it says this, Anyone who builds on that foundation, Jesus, they may use a variety of materials. You can use gold, silver, silver jewels, or wood, hay, or straw. But on the judgment day, that's where we, the judgment seat of Christ, where we receive our rewards for what we have done. But on the judgment day, the fire will reveal what kind of work each builder has done. The fire will show if a person's work has any value. If the work survives, that builder will receive a reward. We talked about this in our End Times uh, series, didn't we? But if the work is burned up, the builder, he'll suffer a great loss, meaning no rewards, nothing to give back to Jesus, nothing to worship him with that we can give back, saying, Lord, I don't deserve this. I want to give this to you and throw it at his feet. You'll have nothing. The builder will be saved. Yes, once saved, always saved. But like someone barely escaping through a wall of flames. Oh, this is called preparing for rapture. We do not want to be ashamed at his coming. We don't want to live like we're sick Christians. We don't want to have our primary focus, the tangible things of this world that, that will just be here today and gone tomorrow. By the way, that reminds me of another passage of scripture I've marked to read this morning. This is um, uh, 6. I've lost my place here. Hold on. 
Matthew 6, 19. Okay, here we go. Matthew 6, 19. Listen to this. Don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them and thieves can break through and steal them, but store your treasures, what you make your priority, store your treasures in heaven because there where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves cannot steal, they cannot steal away your rewards. Wherever your treasure is, there is the desires of your heart. What is your priority? If we had to give a theme to our talk this morning, it would be ask yourself the question, what is your priority? Are you more concerned with the people and things of this earth? with, with uh, what's in your bank account, with the finery of clothing. We all need clothes to wear. We can't walk around without any clothes on. We, we need a roof over our head. Uh, but is that your priority? Or is how you live in Jesus Christ, is that your priority? This is what Jesus is wanting them to see here. So he says again in verse 18, I advise you to buy gold from me, gold that has been purified by fire. We just read that. Then you will be rich. And also buy white garments for me that so you will not be ashamed by your nakedness. Ah, oh, the white garments. How do, how do we remain clothed? And when we receive Jesus Christ, our sins are washed away. And we are symbolically wearing a white garment. But as we walk through this sinful world, I like to picture getting the hem of our garment dirty. It drags along in the, in, in the sinful dirt. And the only way to clean that is repentance and remember repentance isn't just saying sorry lord <laughs> i'm gonna do it tomorrow no it's saying sorry lord I, I i don't know why i do this thing lord maybe it's even a sin that's just got a hold and you just really gotta even share it with someone that you can really trust and pray through it with you that you can be re released from that grip of the enemy he likes to get a vice grip on you and tempt you over and over and over and over again to sin 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 and he lies terribly oh don't even get me on him this morning when we come to and repent and say, Lord Jesus, I'm so sorry. Would you forgive me and cleanse me again? The hem of your garment is now made white again. And what happens to your heart? Your heart is restored in its joy. Woo! We want that. Oh, we want that. He says, um, so you, white garment, so you will not be shamed by your nakedness. And listen to this, ointment for your eyes. So you will be able to see again. They would have totally understood this because of the medical school, because people coming from far and wide to get that ointment that was known at that time for curing eye infections. And, and Jesus is, he's appealing to what they understand, to where they are. E even with that harsh statement, you're like lukewarm water. You're like a sick person ready to vomit. And I'm getting ready to vomit too because of your sinfulness, because of the way you just blatantly live and you don't seem to care, lukewarm. The lackadaisical Christian, I will call this one. The backsliding Christian, we could also say. And Jesus, that's why he's speaking these words. He's saying, please, please, I am coming soon. Jesus doesn't want you to be embarrassed. No, he wants you to be full of joy. He wants you to be standing there in amazement as as rewards are placed before you for everything you have done in his name, for every goodness you have done, kindness to someone else in his name. He wants you to receive that. He wants to give that to you. You know, it's like a, a teacher, I imagine. I know sometimes when I've been teaching, I've had to give the, the dreaded exams. And uh, when one comes back and everything is correct, and I get to put that A at the top. Oh, I feel so good. Oh, what a great student. I love to give that A. It's actually a heartbreak if ever have to put an F. Oh, I don't even like to think about it. Imagine how much more of a heartbreak to Jesus. He wants to give you an A. He doesn't want to put F. No, no. He, he, he is encouraging you and you have the Holy Spirit within you. I have the Holy Spirit within me as a child of God urging us on, guiding us into all truth, teaching us. But you must make that choice to put your eyes on his word, to pray, Lord, I'm reading this. Holy Spirit, teach me now. Oh, Holy Spirit, I'm going to go in this direction. If I shouldn't, oh, cause me to know. Let me know. I only want to walk in God's ways. Oh, Lord, I know I did and said something and thought something that I shouldn't have immediately. 
I am sorry. Oh, Holy Spirit, always bring it to my attention. I don't want to walk around with dirty hem lying on my white garment. Oh, no, I don't want that. Then Jesus says this in verse 19. He says, I correct and I discipline everyone I love. And indeed, that is loving. You know, he's had to say some serious words here, but it's because he loves them. Haven't our parents done the same thing? Haven't you as parents done that? On a light note, I can remember how many parents have you, uh, I've ever heard your parents say, maybe you're running through the house and you're slamming the doors and you hear a voice call out, were you born in a barn? You ever heard that one? <laughs> I think people in my generation, we've all heard that one. And sometimes you parents, your children are behaving in a way that is, um, well, it, it's lukewarm and it, it's not right. And it, it, I mean, you can't, my kid acted like that. What? My kid did that? Oh, you're ready to vomit yourself? No. You have to sit them down and give them a severe talking to, don't you? Why? Because you love them. Because you want them to do their best. Oh, for your joy, but for their joy. Don't you and I feel better when we're walking in the ways of the Lord? Of course we do. Of course we do. We get, begin to get that pricks of consciousness in heart and mind when we are even slightly turning where we shouldn't go. That Holy Spirit saying, what are you doing? Get back on track. And we, oh, I just go this way. You know, if you keep ignoring, you can become lukewarm. You can almost become deaf. The Holy Spirit saying, don't, don't go that way, but you're doing it. There's an allure out there and you're going and you, you're sick even before you know it. And it becomes commonplace every day to live in a bit of misery. You, 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 you're not even aware anymore. Check your heart. We need a heart odometer. Here it is. Check your heart. Ask the Holy Spirit. If there's any wicked way in me, as David prayed in the psalm, then show me, Holy Spirit. Show me because I want to make it right. I want to come to the Lord and say, I am sorry. Forgive me. And I want to wear white, fresh, clean garments, not dirty hems dragging around all over the town. He's, Jesus says, the end of 19, so be diligent and turn from your indifference. And he says, look, I stand at the door and knock. We use this for salvation. It's, that's fine. But here he's actually talking to the backslidden Christian. He says, look, I'm knocking at your door. If you hear my voice, would you please open that door? If you hear me, if you, if you know the Holy Spirit's pricking your conscience, will you take that moment to open the door? And he says, and I will come in. If you want me to forgive you, I'll come in. If you want me to have fellowship with you, I would love it. If you want me to put that A on your paper, please, please, I want to do that. Walk in my ways and we'll share a meal together. Verse 21 says, those who are victorious, they'll sit with me on my throne just as I was victorious and I sat with my father on his throne Anyone with ears to hear, spiritual ears, must listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. Reminds me of that song, Open My Eyes, Lord. I want to see Jesus, to reach out and touch him, to tell him I love him. Open my ears, Lord, and I will listen. Open my eyes, Lord. I want to see Jesus. That's a good prayer, isn't it? A good prayer. Open my eyes, Lord. Open my ears. I want to see clearly. I want to hear clearly. I don't want to be a, 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 a sick Christian almost making you want to vomit. Lord, no, I don't want that. Oh, Lord, I want to have that, that keen fellowship with you. I want to feel confident to stand before you and look into your face and say, Lord Jesus, I know I'm weak, but you're helping me to be strong. Thank you so much. Thank you. Your joy will whoosh overflow. That's what we want, is it not? Wow. So, the letter to the church of Laodicea, to the backslidden, sick Christian. Is it you? Only you can answer that question. You and Jesus. You and the Holy Spirit. Come before him. Holy Spirit, is there anything in me that should not be there? Show me. And then wait. Just wait. Spiritual ears open. And he will show you. And then you may say, thank you. Thank you for showing me because I don't want lukewarm water. I want to be hot. I want to be hot for Jesus. I want to eat of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. I want, to, I want to show the fruit of the Holy Spirit. I want to live it. I want to breathe it. I want to be like a little Jesus walking around. I want to be the hands, the feet, and the mouth of Jesus in my community, in my family, wherever I am. 
I don't want to walk around with a dirty clothes, dragging through this mud of sin of this world. I don't want that. Show me, Holy Spirit, and he will. You have a blessed week. Until next time.